In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to do some problems from chapter 12. So here's the first type of problem. It's a temperature conversion. The coldest outdoor temperature ever recorded was 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And this was in Vostok, Antarctica. I'm going to cross this out because it's annoying. Convert this temperature to degrees Celsius and degrees um, Kelvin. So the first thing we need to do is do the Celsius. And then afterwards, we can do the Kelvin. OK, so um, the formula to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius, you can use either one. But this one's actually a little bit easier. You have, um, you take your Fahrenheit temperature, and you minus 32, and then you divide by 1.8. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can put our temperature in. We have negative 128.6 degrees, and we're going to minus 32, and then we're going to divide by 1.8. Okay, since we have a negative number and we're taking a negative number away from a negative number, we're actually um, we're going to get an, a number that's bigger or like more negative. And we're gonna get um, we're gonna get 160.6, and then we need to divide that by 1.8, and then we'll get 89.22 degrees Celsius, and that's our temperature in Celsius. Now we can take this Celsius temperature, and we can get um, we can get the Kelvin. Now. Our, the only formula we have that has Kelvin in it has Celsius plus 273. So this is why we have to get the Celsius first, because this formula doesn't have Fahrenheit in it at all. So we have to get our Celsius, and then we can get our Fahrenheit. And this is actually going to be negative. So we've got negative 89. This is really... I'm going to redraw this, because... It looks bad. So we've got negative 89.22, and we're going to add 273 to that. OK, so we should get a number that's less than 273. And you should get 183.78. And that's going to be your Kelvin. And remember, you don't have to say degrees Kelvin. Um, sometimes. I'll slip into it, and you might slip into it too, because all the other temperature scales we know are in degrees. But in um, in Kelvin, you don't have to use degrees. Okay, so um, when we turn on the hot water to wash dishes, um, the water pipes have to heat up. How much heat is absorbed by a copper water pipe? So this is copper, and it has a specific heat of 385. I went ahead and looked it up for you guys, so you don't have to worry about it. And it has a mass of 2.3 kilograms, and the temperature is raised from 20 to 80 degrees Celsius. So let's write the things that we know. We know our mass, and it's 2.3 kilograms. It's already in kilograms. We don't have to worry about changing it. We have our initial temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. We have our final temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. And when I get to this point, I go ahead a lot of times, and I just go ahead and I um, calculate my delta T because I'm here anyway, so I might as well deal with it. Um, your delta T is not always the big minus the small. Sometimes it will, if you're, if you're um, lowering the temperature, it's actually going to be the small minus the big. So don't just always do big minus small, even though that's how it is in here. You should always do your initial your final minus your initial. Okay, We have our C, which is our specific heat. And I just looked this up in a table. Okay, I didn't like memorize it or anything like that. I just looked it up in a table. And then they want how much heat. OK, so that's the Q. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write my specific heat formula. I call this the MCAT formula, um, and that's just because it, it looks like cat. But I mean, you don't you don't have to call it that. That's just what I do. 
Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to plop in my numbers. And that's just supposed to be multiply. I just don't want you to think it's an X. And then our delta T is 60. Okay, so we get this kilogram. This kilogram crosses out with this one. And this Celsius crosses out with this one. So, um, so you're good to go there. You're good to go with your units. You'll have the right units of joules when you finish, if you're one of those people that worries about units. And so um, when I multiply all of these things together, I get 53,130. And, that, and that's a big number, and that's okay. Um, you also might see answers written like this. You see me doing this? And that's okay. So you may see answers either way. Either one of these would be right. And that's all you have to do for a specific heat problem. You just plug in your numbers. And remember, you get this C from a table. This is not something that you just like make up out of thin air or, um, or you have to memorize. It's, it's in a table. Um, in the next slide, I'll show you kind of what the table looks like. So the tables look like this. This is our specific heat of copper. This is the one we were using. But there's a whole bunch of different ones. And notice there's one for ice, and there's one for water, and there's one for steam. So it, it matters what phase of water you're in, which one you're going to work with. We don't really deal with the other phases for the other ones because we usually only see them in one phase. So they don't put those on there. OK. Now, this is um, either a heat of fusion or a heat of vaporization. And let's see if we can figure out which one. So once how much heat, OK, that's a Q again. Whenever you see that how much heat, that's telling you once a Q. And this is like a heat energy. And um, it's how much heat is absorbed by 1 times 10 to the 2 grams of ice. So um, our mass is 1 times 10 to the 2 grams. And if you notice, it's in grams, so we do have to do a conversion, which is kind of annoying, but we can do it. Okay, and then we're saying ice is at negative 20 degrees and it's becoming water. So we're going from ice, which is a solid, to water, which is a liquid. Okay, when you go from a solid to a liquid, that's a heat of fusion problem. Okay, heat of vaporization, vapor, steam, you're, uh, or a gas, you're creating a gas. So um, this one is a heat of fusion problem. So the formula for the heat of fusion problems, it's really simple. It's our mass, H, um, lowercase f. And let me go ahead and give you your heat of fusion. That way, um, if I go to the next slide, it'll erase everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it to you. But again, this, this number's looked up in a table too. I didn't memorize it. I've got it written down here. Okay, so that's your heat of fusion, and you'll look it up in a table. And it's really important you get the heat of fusion instead of the heat of vaporization, because if you get the heat of vaporization, you'll do all your math right, and then you'll get the wrong answer because you use the wrong H. So just make sure when you're looking at the table that you get the right one. And I'll show you a table on the next slide. So we have 0 0.1 kilograms times 3.34 times 10 to the 5 it should be joules per kilogram, and my parentheses should end here, not here. And so um, if you're one of those people that um, tracks where the units go, I am, because I like to make sure I get the right answer, and so I track my units, um, that's how they cancel out. And so when I do this math, I get 33,400 joules. You also might see answers written like this. I'm going to count. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you might see an answer either way like this on the test um, as one of your choices. So make sure that you know, you know what the answer looks like both ways. I might try practice my scientific notation a little bit so I know that um, 
how it looks. And that's all you have to do for a heat effusion. A heat of vaporization one is exactly the same, except you they have a V here, and you look up the H um, subscript V instead of the H subscript F, but it's exactly the same. And I'll show you this table. So here's a um, heat of fusion and a heat of vaporization table. This one right here is fusion. This is the HF. It's on the left. And these are the ones, um, if you're doing a fusion problem, you'll look at these. A vaporization is over here. And so if you're doing a heat of vaporization problem, and that's going from a gas to a liquid. So this one is a solid to a liquid. And that's when you'll use these. And then this one is a liquid to a solid, or sorry, a liquid to a gas. And so that's when you'll use the vaporization ones. And that's all you have to do.